class we were looking into uh, modeling a data using a set of uh, non-linear functions but not, not having any adjustment parameters that is a set of fixed non-linear functions and we wrote down the function the, as of this form that is sigma uh, j a j uh, x j of x i. So, this x j of x i is where some could be linear or non-linear functions, but fixed function in the sense that it had no adjustable parameters. And we had, but the, our idea was to model uh, this, uh, the data given data by adjusting this parameters a j. So, to find the a j values such that uh, this is the best fit to a given set of data points. Or in other words, we have to choose a j such that all given data points would pass through the curve represented by this within a distance in a, a distance plus or minus delta y. Okay, so, we had uh, the given data points as x i and y i. So, that was our data points and this is the function which you would fit through that. Okay. So, that is uh, and then for, th for that purpose we would again to define a uh, function called chi squared and which is the difference between this function a k x k of i x k is a function of x x i x and then these are the adjustable parameters and sigma i is you may remember is the reliability of the data x i y i or is the error in the y i for a given x i value. So, now given this uh, set this function and then we could determine this a i value a k values by minimizing uh, chi squared uh, with respect to a k. Okay. So, that is what we were doing. Okay, and we, when we write down, we when you minimize chi squared with respect to a k. So, we would get an equation of this form, a linear equation of this form, linear in a j and which is y i minus a j x j summed over j divided by sigma i squared multiplied by x k uh, is equal to 0. And all we get, if there are m such uh, parameters, that is uh, this is a sum of m functions and then there are m parameters. Uh, so, j goes from 1 to m and then we will have m such equations and which has to be solved simultaneously to get uh, the five functions k, okay, the, the values of a. And it turns out that it is uh, not so difficult because it is a linear function and so we can write y i into x i by sigma i square is equal to sigma j a j x j of x i. So, that is what we would we did in the last class. So, we wrote y i by sigma i squared and x k as j going from 1 to m sigma i going from 1 to n a j x j of x i by sigma i squared into x k of x i. And now, I can write this rearrange these terms and write it in this form and then you would see that this is uh, same as this and then you see that you have a set of coefficients multiplied by this function here that is i summed over i that is for all data points x j x k by sigma i squared into a j right x j x k over i squared sigma i squared into a j is equal to y i x k by sigma i squared. Or and you can see that this is uh, since being a linear equation we can write that in a matrix form and then you would get this alpha k j a j is equal to beta k okay, where alpha k j is now x j x k by sigma i squared summed over i going from 1 to n which is the number of data points which you have. And beta k's are 
y i sigma i square into x k of x i. So, beta k is a function of y i while alpha k j s are only functions of x i s okay, that is what we had and we could solve this equation and uh, obtain a j s and we did that uh, we saw a program which does that for when there are only two adjustable parameters. In the general case where there are m adjustable parameters this would be an m by m matrix and this would be a column vector of size m and this would be a column vector of size m that is what we see okay. and we also saw that we could uh, uh, determine the errors in the a sig a, a i's by defining sigma uh, by defining uh, sigmas for uh, these functions that is we could determine sigma as uh, a i as uh, this form that is we could write sigma squared a j as uh, sigma i we saw that we could write that down because and since we know the a j's in terms of the y i's we can determine all the errors in this functions also okay. So, that is what we have seen in the in the last class and we wanted to extend this uh, model uh, to uh, extend this discussion into a, now a general non-linear models that is now we go from uh, functions of this form where we had fixed non-linear functions multiplied by coefficients we could go into a non-linear function itself that means now you would want to model functions of the form f of x is equal to let us say uh, I am just writing an example as uh, say a 1 e to the power of a 2 x or and then plus maybe a 3 uh, a 3 log of x by a 4 etcetera. Okay. So, I could write some function of this form and I want to fit in this functions into a data. So, the important thing to notice is that in this particular case uh, because these coefficients for example, this is now appearing as a uh, uh, multiplicative factor to this function while this is sitting in the exponential of this quantity and so these quantities could have completely different scales or different dimensions okay. So, that is will have some implication in the analysis which you are going to do okay. So, this a 1 and a 2 or in general these parameters could have completely different dimensions okay. The a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4 can now be completely different dimensions. So, now we want to what we our aim would be to determine this adjustable parameters a 1, a 3, a 4 etcetera okay for uh, such that this is the best representation for a given uh, best uh, function for a given data points or again to repeat the old uh, what I was saying before that is we have to determine a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4 such that all this given set of data points uh, for any value of x would pass would go through uh, the function f of x would be near to the function f of x so that is what we want to determine. So, again we will follow the same procedure as before we would determine a chi square and then we minimize the chi square uh, with respect to a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4 that is what be the, the general procedure would be. The general procedure would be to again write down the function the chi square function and minimize these functions this a, uh, chi square with respect to a 1, a 2 and a 3, a 4. So, we will see how we will proceed with this. So now, so that's uh, so now to summarize this, we in this you now we will look at an how to fit in a nonlinear function uh, for for a given set of data points and get a given set of tabulated data by uh, a nonlinear function. So for example, of the form e to the power of a one x, a two x, etc. Okay, so so now the procedure we uh, do for this as uh, as before, so we could determine chi squared as uh, sigma i y i minus f of x i the whole squared by sigma i squared that is what we have been doing and then what we would want then now this f of x i is now as all this adjustable parameters. So, we would want to determine del chi squared by del a j equal to 0 and use this set of equations to determine. So, we would and now in general it turns out it turns out that uh, because uh, this function is now nonlinear in the in the parameters a i okay with the set of equations we get from this okay are also nonlinear. Okay. So, now we have a set of nonlinear coupled equations okay now that become much more difficult to solve than a set of linear equations which we had here. 
So we will uh, we will follow a slightly different procedure from what we have used in here uh, to solve this equation. Right? So that is to uh, do an iterative uh, approach. Okay, so we will try to get the f values of a in this function. Okay, and by an iterative method. That is, we some come with a, a set of guess values for a's. Okay, and then we will iterate around that uh, values. That is, you say that we will assume we have a set of a i's. Okay, such that chi square is a minimum for that set. Okay, let's say we call them as a, a. So now a is now a vector which contains say one a two up to a m. Let's say, and we'll come up with a set of a guess value for all these parameters. And we will write down uh, chi squared of a. Okay, let me call that a zero. Okay, and we will assume that uh, this uh, uh, the guess value is quite good. That is, the chi squared we obtain is kind of it's close to its minimum value. Okay. So now remember, chi square is now a function of a because f of x is a function of a's. Right. So now what our idea is to minimize chi square with respect to a's. So what we are saying is that we assume we make a guess for the a values. And we will assume that uh, this guess is quite good. That is, uh, uh, what the uh, for the set of values for a i s which you have assumed, uh, chi square is quite close to its minimum, or del chi square by del a j are close to zero. That is, the derivatives of chi square with respect to a s are very small. Okay. In that kind of uh, scenario, we can uh, we can expand chi squared around that value of a0 or we say that uh, chi squared of a uh, that is for some value around a0 can be expanded as chi squared of a0 uh, plus del okay I will write it for each of these functions okay so a0 uh, j okay so a is for each of these elements I could write this as uh, Etc. So we could, I could, I'm just tailor expanding it for if you have one parameter, I could just tailor expand it in this fashion. That is, uh, I'm assuming that I have uh, the, the the chi squared values are such that uh, the the a zero values I've guessed here, okay, are such that so let's be a zero one, a zero two, etc. So a zero being my guess value, okay, is such that it is very close to its minimum. That is, its derivatives are very close to zero. And in that case, I could expand it in in this fashion. In a Taylor series, so I just do a Taylor series expansion, or uh, in general case uh, for all the a's, I could write this expansion in the in the following form. Okay, I would write that expansion as uh, chi squared of a. A is now a vector. So we write as chi squared of a zero uh, plus delta a, which is also a vector, del chi squared by del a and uh, plus exit okay so i could write it in this in this fashion okay. so uh, basically what i'm trying to say is that if if i say that my guess is good Okay, then if that close to that that is chi square is close to the minima, then I can Taylor expand this function, okay, and then get a new value of chi square, and I'm going to say that this chi squared value, okay, is my minimum, is my new minimum, right? or I will Taylor expand my function chi squared function around this a zero, okay, such that I go into the minimum, okay, I demand I go into the minimum, that is this is the new minimum, and I will determine my Delta a values, that is a zero minus a, okay, values such that this is the this is a minimum, okay. and I can do always do that, and then if this is my initial guess is a good, and that would mean that del chi squared, the new a, 
divided by del A which is the same as del chi square by delta A uh, is equal to 0. So, remember all this uh, values are evaluated at A equal to A 0 right. So, all the derivatives are evaluated at A equal to A 0. So, del chi square by del A would simply mean del chi square by del A at A equal to A 0 uh, plus delta A into del chi square by uh, so that is a 1 over 2 okay del chi square by del A square okay. So, that is what I would get from this okay. So, uh, to repeat so what I am trying to say is that uh, uh, I make instead of solving uh, this equations directly I go through an iterative approach okay. So, that is I make some initial guesses for my A's okay, and I would expand my chi squared function around uh, that uh, initial guess okay. and then I would write a expression like this because the Taylor expanded okay. and then I can uh, say that my new uh, the function which I obtained okay the new uh, chi squared value I obtained okay that is around chi squared a naught okay is a minimum that is del chi square by del a is then is equal to 0 okay. So, that will from this I can do differentiate this right hand side by a equal to 0. So, that gives me an equation del chi square by del a plus delta a into del chi square by del a square del square chi square by sorry del square chi squared by del a square and uh, that that I can solve that equations for my delta a's and that is determine the new a's. So, once I determine the new a's okay I go back and again check that it is actually a minimum okay and if it is not a minimum I will I will assume that as my new guess value okay and then I will take that as my new guess value and continue this whole procedure again. So, that is what the method we will be will be following. So, let me summarize that here okay. So, we represent uh, by a set of parameters now this is a vector a here this is a set of parameters a 1 a 2 up to a n right. And then we say that my guess value is uh, a equal to a 0 and I assume that this guess value minimizes chi squared a okay. So, now uh, of course, this is a guess. So, it will not be uh, may not be true okay. So, in that case uh, I say if it is not actually true and then uh, I can expand to my chi squared function around that a 0 value okay. So, I could write it as you know to get del chi square chi squared a naught uh, d delta a and delta a d del square. This is now, now you can see that this will be the first derivative this d here will be the first derivative of chi squared okay with respect to whatever a k functions you are using. Okay. So, then this d would be the second derivative of chi square that is what I have written on the board okay, that is a it is expansion of of the Taylor expansion of chi squared around the value a naught which is my guess function. Okay. So, I have this matrix elements d k j and and the element d k. Now, what I am going to say is that this expansion gives me a new chi squared value and which is now the minimum okay. So, that would imply that del chi squared by del a should be 0 because my new chi squared is the minimum that is it there should be 0 and that would uh, if from this from this by differentiating this I would get that as minus d plus d dot del a equal to 0 okay. So, uh, I have written that as delta a is a naught minus a and a. So, that means now from this I can solve this equation now you can see that we are back to our uh, discussions in the last class that is uh, for the general nonlinear functions. So, we have a set of linear equations now. So, of course, this Taylor expansion here is uh, terminated at set point at uh, the order 2 that is why we have a linear equation and if you do not terminate it at the order 2 we will not have a nonlinear equation, but our idea is to get a linear equation. So, we, we terminated it at order 2 okay. and because we terminated it at order 2 and this uh, the resulting linear equations when we solve we can get the delta a's and then once we have the delta a's we can always get the a values because we know the a 0 values and from that we can obtain the a values. Okay. So, once you determine in short when you determine the matrix d and a we can get a new set of a values. Okay. So, now because we have made approximations already that is we have uh, terminated it at order 2. Okay. So, what we get uh, may not be uh, the true minimum again. Okay. So, now if it is not the true minimum then what we do is we go back to this equation again now replace the new a by new uh, the what we got as new a as a naught and continue with this equation again 
So what, what the changes would be is that we have to again determine this D and this uh, little d here and the capital D okay that is this matrix element we have to again determine at the new values. As I said here this derivatives when we take okay this del chi squared by del a j s and del square chi squared by del a j square this determinant uh, this determinant uh, sorry these derivatives are determinant a equal to a naught. Okay, so in short what will be the, the, the summary is that we have uh, so we assume uh, we assume uh, a's okay so a equal to a naught right we compute uh, chi squared of a as expansion around chi square of a naught plus uh, okay that way we wrote as minus d times delta a plus uh, delta a d delta a etc okay where these elements d and uh, uh, capital d were given by so the elements of d uh, was dk or uh, dj is del chi squared by del a j and uh, elements d j k was del chi squared by okay so we can expand that so that's uh, that is part number 2 okay and then so we that's our first step and then we had this step in which we expanded this function right so that determines d and uh, capital d as uh, little d and then we can del delta a so from this we say del chi squared by del a equal to 0 so that would give us that delta a is equal to we get us minus d inverse capital d sorry delta a as d inverse into d that is what we, we would get and then from that we can determine a so that so we will get new a's okay so some new a as some a naught plus delta a so that is what we got and now this new a if this does not minimize again we will determine chi squared a okay and we see del chi squared by so from this we will determine chi squared a and del chi squared by del a's okay. Now if this is not 0 that is basically since this is same as this element d okay if this is not 0 then we will go back from here into this by replacing a not equal to a. The, this values of a will replace into a not we will go back here and then again compute so not here we will again compute this quantity and now all the determine all the elements now that is the, the derivatives has to be now the for the elements of d and uh, the little d has to be now determined at the new value a and then we continue this iterative procedure till the elements this till this goes to 0 okay that is what we want to do okay, so we want to go this we want to reach till this is 0 if the if we go back here if del chi squared by del a is not equal to 0 then we will go back here okay in this part again here and if it is 0 we stop the program there so that is the that is the iterative approach which you are going to do. So, so that is uh, summarize again so we had the del chi square and we could determine the delta a from that and from there we could determine a as a naught plus delta a which is given this and then we would repeat this procedure till we get these elements d which are actually the uh, which are actually the first derivatives of del chi square okay, going to 0 because if chi squared is actually a minimum then the first derivative should go to 0 that means the matrix elements d should go to go to 0 that is what we want to determine. So now uh, uh, the point is that uh, we have to determine here uh, del chi square by del a's okay, or uh, this functions okay so that so now we saw that d and uh, little d as first derivative and the second derivative so let me write that down again. So in this whole scheme we had uh, d k as del chi squared by del a k and we had d k j as del chi squared by del a k del a j and we had chi squared as uh, y i minus f of x i divided by sigma i the whole square sigma i 
such what work I, we had okay. So, now we can determine now f so that would mean that d k so r y i minus f of x i divided by sigma i square sum over i into minus uh, into del f by del a k with a minus sign that is what you get from this right and uh, d k j's now are the derivatives of this. So, there are two terms in this it will be minus sigma i y i minus f of x i divided by sigma i squared into del squared f by del a k del a j that is one term and then we would have plus 1 over again uh, sum over i 1 over sigma i squared del f by del a k and del f by del a j. Okay, so, we had these two uh, functions now. Okay, so, now we have the matrix elements are given by this and we know the f as a function of x i. So, f's are functions of x i's and a i. Okay, so, we know that. Okay, that is what we have. So, now anyway we are going to do what we are doing is an approximate scheme in the sense we have uh, terminated this expansion uh, in the second uh, term or the second order term. Okay, so, and we are doing an iterative procedure. So, we could make uh, further approximations to simplify things because when we are doing a, pro a scheme an approximate scheme uh, we could uh, also uh, approximate this function uh, by only this term because numerically uh, it is difficult to determine uh, it is it is there will be more errors in the second order derivative schemes uh, derivatives ok. So, instead of using the second order derivatives of the function at every time you would just only compute the, the first order derivative and assume that d k j is uh, uh, we will approximate it by we will just approximate this function by saying that it is sigma i 1 over sigma i squared uh, del f of x i divided by del a j ok that is what we would do right. So, then so we will use this as an approximation ok. So, we will not ok. So, we were not going to use the full uh, second derivative instead of that we will just use this derivative this has the approximation to this whole second derivative and the first derivative is given by this that is what we are going to do ok. So, basically we have to only determine the first derivative and the product of the first derivative will determine the uh, we will determine the matrix elements for the capital D k j and this little d k will be determined by the first derivative multiplied by y minus f of x i by sigma i square. So, that simplifies the, the calculation further. Okay, and this is justified because anyway our idea is to finally get this to zero, right? So that's our our aim, and uh, and we are following an iterative scheme, okay? And we would see that uh, uh, in a implementation that the errors introduced by the second derivative will be much larger than the approximation we make by doing this. Okay. The final answer, of course, will not depend on this approximation because the final answer is correct provided this goes to zero. So, that is what the, the scheme would be and that is what we are going to do. So, we have the chi squared here and we have the first derivative of del chi square by del a k as this ok and the second derivative as I said just now there are two terms one is the product of the first derivative and the other one is the second derivative of this function. Okay. So, what we do is we will we will make an assumption that uh, the second derivative is only given by uh, this this function that is the del f del square f by del a k del a j term we will uh, throw away. So, now the, 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 the this matrix d k l is approximated as the product of this first derivatives. So, that is the that is the summary of the uh, procedure ok. So, once we have that and then now we have the matrix elements sorry this is d k l and the uh, uh, and the little d and then we have this matrix element. So, we make the we write them as 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 here just to absorb that factors of 2 into this equations ok and then we can write it in a simple matrix form as a nu 
as a0 minus d inverse d. That is what will we have to do. So, once we have uh, this a nu as a0 minus d inverse into d, we can solve this equation and uh, we will get back, we will uh, once we solve this equation, so we have the new chi square, new a value and we can determine the chi square value. So, now in an implementation that is that is what all it is okay it is very simple. So, we determine the uh, once we have the function form uh, we can determine the chi square we can calculate the chi square that means we can determine d k s and uh, d k j s okay and then uh, write it into this equation and determine the new a values okay. So, that is a new value would be given by the a old value plus the delta a which we determine as the uh, as d inverse d. And then we would assume that uh, we will follow this iterative procedure we would finally go into and uh, d k equal to 0. Okay. But in practice we will see that this does not happen all the time and uh, because uh, we would have an initial guess our initial guess if this is uh, really far away uh, from the real value uh, the, iter the our iteration will not co converge okay. it could go into in fact away from the from the minimum because we really do not know how the chi squared uh, is a behaves as a function of a in the, in the path of a we are following. So, we may not maybe our initial guesses may not be close enough to uh, the real minima. okay in that case uh, minima of chi square minima of chi square. So, in that case we may not con we will not go into the minima by this procedure. So, now let us let us look at what we are doing we are doing as to to get the new delta a is we are using the second derivative or this what is called the hessian uh, of the function okay that is what we are using. Okay. So, to get the new new delta a we are using the second derivative uh, matrix okay we are using the second derivative matrix that is what we do to get to the new function the uh, new values of a. So, we could uh, or which we have approximated as the product of the first derivatives. But when when it goes away from the equilibrium from from the from the minima, that is, if uh, our iterative scheme is not converging, that's one test of convergence would be the elements of dk, right? If the elements of dk are not going towards zero, but going away from zero, okay. in that case, uh, uh, what we could do is uh, not use. Uh, so uh, we could use uh, a, a new a new guess. So, what we would do is we will just abandon this guess and go into a new guess value that is one, one approach okay. and then we try uh, try our luck on whether we are converging or not. Or another method is to say that okay, I will just take this uh, old a value and multiply it by some constant and go into a new value. Okay. So, that is another scheme okay. instead of just making a completely new guess I have the whatever value I got obtained from this solution of this equation. I take this a and instead of using that a completely as uh, instead of equating this a 0 equal to a means the first iteration uh, what I get as new a I compute uh, that chi square of a from that and del square x square by del a or I evaluate this dk matrix again and then see the elements are going towards 0. If they are not going towards 0 then I have to I suppose to go back here okay and if they are not 0 I go back here, but if they are going away from 0 then what I should do is instead of writing a 0 equal to a I would write this as you now a 0 equal to some constant uh, times a and then put that back here okay. So, that is a next uh, technique okay. So, these are numerical uh, techniques that is uh, if everything is all right if your initial guess is fine then everything should converge smoothly and if it does not converge and if you see that. Uh, if your your derivatives are going away from 0 instead of going towards 0 and then you take this new a values which you obtain multiply it by some constant and then give it back here again instead of giving it as a 0 equal to a I say now a 0 equal to constant times a. So, this is a technique which we can use okay, to put the to get the new value. So, then a question naturally arises is what is the constant value. So, before I go into that I would like to summarize this once again. So, we said that uh, we have the chi squared function which we written like this and then we determine the d k s and the d k j s as a second derivative and the first derivative okay, of the chi squared function and we said that we make an approximation into the second derivative of instead of the full second derivative of the chi squared function we will take it as the product of the two first derivatives 
divided by 1 by sigma i square and then we Taylor expand the chi squared around the guess value and from this Taylor expansion uh, we say that by Taylor expanding I can go to the actual minima and that assumption leads me to the function that del chi square by del a should be 0 at the new value a okay so this should be 0 at the new value a okay so that depends del chi square by del a should be 0 so that from this equation then I can get an expression of this form okay that is I can determine the delta a's and from that delta a's I can determine the new a's and I say that if that is and because I have made all these approximations this new a's may not be the real minima I, in that case I would go back and do the iteration but a technical question comes what happens if this new value a obtained it takes me away from the minima than closer to the minima how do I know that uh, I know that by computing del chi square by del a if del chi square by del a is not going towards 0 then that means I am going away from the minima in that case I should instead of using the new a value completely the new a value as a 0 uh, I should use the new a value multiplied by a constant as a 0 so that is the summary so now the question uh, is what is this constant which I can use to multiply so we see that that is why I said in the beginning that uh, this a is in this, this function in f which, are, which contains a all different a's have different uh, dimensions okay one could be a dimension of length another could be a dimension of time and so they all have different dimensions. So you cannot use the same constant to multiply all the a's okay so because they have different dimensions okay so and, and the scales could be very different so it is not correct to use the same constant you multiply all the a's so we need for different a's, a is, a, a is a, as I said it is a column vector now so it has contained all a1, a2 up to a m parameters okay. so we need a different constants to multiply the a's okay one more thing so or how do we do that okay so one way is to do is to take that if you look at uh, this uh, this function okay you, this matrix here okay and you will see that the, the diagonal elements of this matrix which is just del f by del a j del a j whole square okay has the dimension of the a j's so to determine the new a j's what we are doing is to uh, take the this matrix d and find the inverse of that and multiply it into this first derivative matrix so what we see is that uh, when it is not converging we need to multiply it by a constant okay. so the problem is what do we, how do we determine the constants because uh, each of these a's are different dimensions or some are length some are time etc okay. so one way to determine that as I said is to take this d okay, and look at the diagonal elements of that okay and give that diagonal elements more weightage okay. so that is one way of doing this okay instead of multiplying by a constant here and this constant will be different for different a's so what we do is to take this matrix d here and uh, or this dkj matrix and give more weightage to its diagonal elements so instead of using this dkj matrix straight away here we will give more weightage to its diagonal elements and then multiply it by the d okay so that is equivalent to doing this so if, if it is converging we give, use, give all elements of the matrix the same weight okay, and if it is not converging we would give more weightage to its diagonal elements and that is what we would be following so that is what I meant by doing this yeah. La, uh, Levenberg uh, Marquardt method is this exactly that one that is in which we determine the Hessian that is the this element this matrix dkj's okay, and then we would give more weightage to its uh, its diagonal elements when uh, when the when the chi square is not converging or the, the chi square is not going towards its minimum okay so so that is uh, we use this constant so this constant is we will use the as the that's the diagonal elements of the of the matrix okay so or in other words we would write uh, you know the matrix now as a di in the diagonal elements of the matrix we will write as 1 plus lambda into djj so you remember djj is a diagonal matrix of diagonal elements of this matrix d okay. so now we will rewrite those matrix elements as 1 plus lambda and we put lambda equal to 0 when everything is converging okay. and lambda equal to a large number if things are not converging 
So that we now we have an additional parameter lambda here, okay, which is in the iterative scheme. So we'll see uh, are we going towards the del chi square by del a equal to zero, and if we are going towards zero, then we would put lambda equal to zero, and if you are going away from that, then we put a lambda equal to a large value, say ten or something like that, and then we would go back. And then in the next step, if it improves, then we decrease the lambda again. Okay. So we decrease the lambda. In general, we start with lambda equal to let's say one, okay, because we don't know our assumption, initial assumption, how good it is. So we let's say start with lambda equal to one. And if we are going towards, the, if you are going, we are converging, we keep decreasing the lambda. And if you are diverging, we keep increasing the lambda. So that's the general scheme which would follow. Okay. So that has uh, been summarized here. So uh, this new this method of uh, choosing the uh, lambda value. So we choose a moderate initial value for lambda. Let's say well, lambda equal to one, and then we would compute the matrix D and uh, the little d. Okay. And now we'll solve this equation for delta a, and then we will determine the chi square at new delta a, new a value. That is a plus delta a. Right? We solve this equation d d inverse. Uh, d inverse d to get uh, the new delta a and from the delta a we can compute the new value of a or and from the new value of chi square the chi square a plus delta a. Now if chi square of a plus delta a is going away from the minimum that is it is going it is increasing as uh, uh, upon the earlier value then we would increase the lambda by a factor of 10 and if it is decreasing we will decrease it by a factor of 10. So that is the scheme which we do okay. and we will go back and repeat the process unless uh, this is this done. So that's a minimize. That's a way we do if lambda is uh, uh, if our uh, scheme is not converging. So we'll now see a, an implementation of uh, this code okay. in uh, this this uh, algorithm in a in a program. We will we'll first see the implementation uh, without the lambda, and uh, we will see the implementation of the lambda after that. So here we are uh, trying to fit is a given data point, a set of data points through a function of this form that is exponential a1 uh, x plus uh, 3 times exponential a2 of x. So that is that's a function which you are trying to fit. Okay, so I will write that uh, function here. So we are trying to fit a function of this form that is uh, exponential a1 times xi or this f of xi plus 3 times uh, exponential a2 xi. So I have chosen this function so that again uh, we have only two parameters to uh, to fit. Uh, so our matrices would be only 2 by 2 matrices. Okay, so it is easy to solve without actually going through a numerical technique to invert the matrix. Okay, so because of that we will use this, this uh, as an example. Okay, and what our idea would be to determine a1 and a2 from this. So by minimizing chi square. So we will write chi square now as uh, uh, 1 over. So, so we, we have all the sigma i's as 1 again okay. and then we will write chi square as sigma i going from 1 to n uh, y i minus the whole square. And then we would uh, determine all the uh, all the matrices D and uh, capital D, and we would uh, implement this in this program. So that's what we are doing here. So this is the chi square. Chi square is uh, exponential uh, a one x plus three exponential a two x square. So I multiply that again <coughs> by this and minus y of phi. So sorry, the chi square is. Uh, minus y of i. So I should substitute with minus, minus y of i. Okay. So, so chi square is a exponential a 1 x plus 3 exponential a 2 x uh, a 2 x minus y of i. So that is what we have to, uh, so what we have to determine is the a 1 and the a 2 values from this. Okay. Okay, so now uh, begin with we have a program is similar to that, the, uh, similar to the earlier ones that is we have the x of x in array x and y okay, in which uh, we would uh, uh, store the, or we would read off the elements uh, of the uh, data points given 
uh, the data points are now given in this nonlinear dot data. But this this function this uh, file, so we'll read off that file to get our x and y values uh, till the end of the file. So remember, this is a while loop here, and this while loop will read it till the file end of file statement is uh, seen. So we don't have to give the number of uh, data points; it'll read it off by itself, and the number of data, uh, data points are then equal to i minus two. Okay, so that's what we we read off. So we have the all the data in, in this file. And then uh, we would, uh, the program would kind of uh, look for an input for the A1 and A2 values. That's the initial guesses for the A1 and A2 values. Okay, or the function e to the power of A1x plus 3 e to the power of A2x. So A1 and A2 are the ones you have to determine. Uh, whether the idea of this program would be is to determine A1 and A2, but we would give A1 and A2 a guess value, right? And then so to initialize, so we. Now we have to determine the D matrix and the little D matrix. So, and we will. So now this is the start of the uh, of the loop. Okay, the iterative loop. Okay. So first uh, we have to initialize this uh, D matrices. This is a Hessian and the uh, little D matrix, which is the first derivative of chi squared. And we will continue this uh, till this uh, elements of this D matrix, that is the first derivative of chi square, goes to zero. Right? Okay, so that's a while loop doing. So that is this is the start of the iterative loop. So the iterative loop will continue till the sum of the elements of this D matrix uh, goes to zero. Right? So that is the uh, the uh, so I have taken the uh, sum of the absolute value of the elements in this matrix. I, okay, I cannot say in a numerical program it should go to zero. So I have given some tolerance here. The tolerance is 0 0.01. Okay, you could change this tolerance uh, to the desired value. Uh, so here, so now, so the while loop, that is the uh, iterative loop starting. Okay, now this iterative loop uh, starts from here, and then it keeps continue. It continuing. Uh, it keeps continuing, or con it continues up to. Uh, the elements of the D matrix goes to zero, and I determine that by computing uh, the absolute values of the element, the sum of the absolute values of the elements. That's what my it should be greater than. If it's greater than 0 0.01, then it sh the, the loop should continue. If it goes less than 0 0.01, then it will stop. That's the that's the scheme which I given, and this tolerance is something which is to be determined by the user. Okay, so now then we initialize the D matrix and uh, uh, the Hessian, and then we would compute that values. Okay, so we are computing the sum over i, sum over i, and the product of the two derivatives. Right, so that's what we're doing. So product of the two derivatives and the factors of two in, incorporated, because we wanted to write it as sim delta a as d inverse d. So we want to write. So we put in the factors of two here. And then this is the product of the first derivatives of the function. So this is d zero zero would be just the product del f by del, del f by del a one multiplied by del f by del a one. So that is simply x of i into x of i exponential two a one f x of i. We have the function of this form, and we said that the matrix elements d one one would be then two times uh, del f by del a1 into del f by del a1 two coming because we want to write this as simply d inverse d okay. so that is so that would give us uh, as here uh, two times uh, xi into del f by del a1 will be again e to the power of a1x so e to the power of a1x uh, xi and uh, into xi e to the power of a1 xi or i wrote this as Two times x i into x i, that is x i square, e to the power of two a one x i. So similarly, other elements I can write down, and that is uh, what has been put in here. Okay, so x i into x i e to the power of two a one x i, and d zero one would be now the the multiplied by two times x i into e to the power of a one x i into x i into the power of a two x i, because now d zero one is the a two. The, fun the second part of the function, and that's d zero one and d one zero are symmetric. Same, the symmetric, and then you have d one one, which will be now two times x i into x i into three times exponential a two x into three times exponential a two x. That is nine times exponential two a two x. 
that is what is here okay. So, that is the matrix elements uh, as we determined okay. So, the d 1 1 is 2 times x i x i 9 times exponential 2 a 2 x i. So, that is what okay. And then we have the d 0 which is y i minus exponential a 1 x i plus 3 times exponential a 2 x i that is y i minus f of x i into the derivative of the function that is x of i into exponential a 1 x i the derivative of the function with respect to a 1. So, that is x of x i into exponential a 1 x i and similarly d 1 would be y i minus f of x i multiplied by the derivative of the function with respect to a 2 now that is 3 times x of i exponential a 2 x i. So, now we have the matrix and then uh, we would compute the inverse of the matrix as we had done for the a general linear fit. So, we have the determinant of the matrix and then I take the I will compute the, the inverse of the matrix as a adjoint divided by the determinant and then from which using that I can determine now the a 1 and a 2 values. Okay. So, I by multiplying the matrix with uh, uh, the d the, the d inverse with, with the d so the capital D inverse with d I can determine the delta a and then I know the new value of a 1 as a 1 minus delta a as we just saw. Okay, so, a 1 minus delta a is implemented here. So, that is this a 1 and a 2 are the new values. So, the old value minus this product of matrices okay, gives me the new values of a 1 and a 2. Okay. So, then I would determine now, now I'll, once I have the a 1 and a 2 values here, okay, I can I also have the, the d values here and here I will just check whether these d values satisfy my condition of uh, in the while loop that is uh, the absolute value of d 0 plus d 1 is less than 0 0.01. If it does not satisfy then it, this loop will continue with uh, this newly determined a 1 and a 2 values as the new values and I compute again the d 0 matrix and the d and the capital D and the little d matrices and we continue the iteration all the way. And once that uh, condition is satisfied, that is the uh, the value of the so once this uh, the absolute the sum of the absolute values of the d's are less than 0 0.01, then it comes out of this thing of this loop, okay, and writes the new chi-square value and the uh, the standard error. So that's what this program should do. Okay, so we look at this program. So, we will compile this and then run this program and since we waiting for some input values to be given. So, I give some input values as minus 0 0.5 and minus 0 0.8 okay. So, it computes that thing and it gives me as minus 0 0.898 and minus, point, uh, minus 1.43 as my as a solution finally okay. So, it went through uh, some number of iterations okay and then it comes out uh, so of course obviously it didn't it didn't uh, complete this in one iteration so it did in many iterations okay so and it, but it converts to this program okay and uh, so it, it started with uh, a1 a2 values as 0 0.22 and 0.23 and then 0 0.36 1.4 etc and finally it converged into this value that is minus 0 0.898 and 1.43 and with a chi square which is 0 0.26 and a standard error of 0 0.14 which seems to be pretty good Okay, so, we will look at this now we will plot the uh, data which we had in that nonlinear dot data function uh, in the program in the file and we will compare that with this exponential minus 0 0.898 x x i plus 3 times minus exponential minus 1.43 x i function. So, that is what we will we will do here. So, minus we have 0 0.898 and 1.437 as the parameters. Okay, so, I have 0 0.898 and uh, 1.43 as our parameters and that is a function I am putting non linear dot data is the data which is given to us and exponential minus 0 0.898 x plus 3 times exponential minus 1.43 x is our is our function. So, I will plot this function and that is what uh, we would uh, get. Now in this plot, okay, you can see that the the round uh, again the data are given to us, and this is our fit through it, okay, and this is the best fit which we can get with this double exponential function. Okay. So now uh, we should now look at an example where 
uh, this uh, may not uh, uh, be so simple that is uh, this function may not converge as easily as we just now saw. So in that case we will have to now in the in the program uh, we will have to uh, make some modification that is we will have to now say that d00 instead of saying it is just the product of the two derivatives we will have to multiply this by 1 plus lambda okay. and whenever we go away from the convergence we will have to increase the lambda and we go towards the convergence we have to decrease the lambda and that is the only modification in terms of lambda which we have to make only the d00 element and the d11 element we will have to change and in include this into to accommodate the, the convergence uh, the solution for the convergence problem okay. that is what we should be trying to do in this uh, in this in this program and then we will see in the in the next class I will stop here. Mm -hmm.